Uh, hello everybody for uh, this session of NXP Campus Clinics and uh, we are really privileged to have this session in conjunction with Bet Spelani and uh, it's been a uh, real privilege to talk to all of you. Uh, for today's session we have uh, uh, three of our esteemed colleagues to uh, for the session. Uh, we have Balvinder Kurana uh, who has been with NXP with for more than uh, uh, for more than 20 years now, and uh, he has an overall experience of 20 years and has worked with many companies like Intel, Motorola, McAfee, Tosh Toshiba, and has been in an XP for I think over uh, five to seven years now. Uh, al along with uh, Balvinder, we have Shiva Chetty, Vali uh, Shetty. He also has an overall experience of 20 plus years and has been uh, has worked across many companies across uh, the globe. Uh, he worked on the development of uh, digital TV, set-top box, DVD players, and robotics. Uh, and then we have Rishi, uh, Rishi Chabra, who is a young engineer uh, in our organization and is working on hardware security engine uh, validation. So together, all three of them would give a perspective of uh, uh, system validation uh, from a pre-silicon and post-silicon perspective. Uh, before we start, I would like to invite Mr. Tabir Mishra uh, from Bitpilani, and uh, he would like to uh, talk to the audience here. Thanks, uh, Mr. Mishra, and Balvinder, after Mishra completes, uh, you can start uh, the presentation. Thanks a lot. Sure, thank you. Thank you so much, Akhilji, and uh, good evening to the entire NXP team and to all the students who joined online. It's an absolute pleasure to be here, and it's an honor and a privilege for Bits Pilani to tie up with NXP for a very noble initiative. Uh, being from the placement line, I can assure you that what companies are looking for today is a way to bridge the academia uh, corporate gap. And the gap uh, primarily consists of a lack of exposure to what is currently happening in the industry. And that is where initiatives like this and uh, experienced people like Mr. Khurana play an absolutely invaluable role. So I would urge all of, all of you to pay very, very close attention, take extensive notes, because you never know, we hope this comes true, NXP may be your next company. And uh, the inputs that Mr. Khurana and his team give here today may prove absolutely invaluable at that stage. So uh, I'm very, very happy and very proud to be connected to NXP. It's been a very long uh, association with NXP. And if I talk about the team, even when uh, when it was operating as Freescale before that. So uh, very happy in an extremely value-based, very, very solid company and definitely a market leader in, the, in terms of innovation. And uh, I look forward to the kind of inputs that Mr. Kurana and his team would be giving. I'm sure all of you will too. Thank you so much to the NXP team. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Khilji and uh, Mishwari. Uh, I think thanks for a great introduction here. Yes, I think we are definitely looking at, uh, you know, new experts coming in from the academia and uh, making a difference here uh, in our organization. So I think in that same spirit, uh, I would be kind of sharing and with my some of my colleagues will be sharing today uh, my experiences and mostly the domain would be the system validation space. So that's where I would be, you know, uh, sharing my thoughts there. So Shubham, uh, if you can present, um, that will help us. Yeah, thank you. Right, so I think as uh, Akhilji kind of uh, quickly introduced me, so I am a senior principal manager here uh, in the validation team, uh, the NXP Semiconductors, overall 20 plus years of experience and uh, mostly into the post-silicon validation domain. Uh, right. And uh, overall with this uh, overall 20 plus years of experience, uh, you know, I had opportunities to be part of some of the, you know, IEEE publications, then uh, patents and uh, obviously with respect to the keynote speakers in the IEEE, uh, you know, uh, conferences as well. So overall kind of a rich experience here in the validation space. Uh, past companies uh, before NXP, I have worked with uh, Motorola, McAfee, 
Intel and now NXP. So overall, I think it's a great stint and NXP uh, is a great place to work in terms of, you know, the uh, the kind of uh, uh, environment and the technical uh, things that I've been working on here. So it's exciting journey here. And that's where I wanted to excite you as well in terms of what I do and uh, what is the system validation space uh, looks like. Right, so let's move ahead, uh, Shubham. So basically, in my talk today, uh, I would be quickly talking about uh, an overview of the digital validation front uh, in terms of the overview of the background importance and then, you know, what we do, how do we, how we do and what are the, the different, different aspects of uh, what we do here as part of the system validation in NXP. All uh, right, so and then probably after us, you know, uh, the second part of here is would be the kind of security validation uh, in terms of the secure firmware validation. So once we have that session, we should be open up for, for a Q&A. Right, so yeah, sure, well, maybe move, let's move ahead. So basically, uh, you know, guys, uh, we start up with on the system validation front. It's kind of uh, important to, you know, just set a context and touch upon what NXP is really working on. What are the key target areas that, uh, you know, NXP is working on? So essentially, we are in the automotive space. In fact, uh, NXP is number one in the automotive uh, chipsets today, right? And then it's already exciting in terms of, you know, the autonomous vehicles that are coming in. Uh, we being here, uh, it's very exciting world overall uh, in what the chips are right now able to do, right? And people still recall, you know, during the COVID times when the supply chain was crunch, I think semiconductors certainly became very important and, you know, uh, kind of uh, relevant for everybody. Then came the, uh, the industrial and the IoT. So here I think mostly our chipsets uh, land up here in the industries in the IoT space, which are which is the next generation, uh, you know, wave that is coming in, uh, especially around the AI and the compute, right? And uh, mobile space, obviously we are part of the, uh, you know, the mobile chipsets as well. As, you know, mostly we are the uh, premier there in terms of the NFC, the near field communications, which we are, you know, bringing in legacy from Philips and all that, right? And then comes the communication infrastructure. So here, mostly in terms of the the 5G, LTE, the wireless infrastructure, right? So we uh, NXP uh, are a very strong player that uh, there as well. So most of the chipsets that we kind of see uh, are in these uh, in this space, right? Let's show them. We move it. Yeah, thank you. So basically, you know, once we, uh, so it is very important when we start looking into the system validation for antennas kind of a system, uh, you know, view, right? In terms of, you know, when we kind of create a chip, uh, you know, when we design a chip, it's basically, you know, we start with a 360 degree kind of a view. What really is customer looking for? Right. What is generally they are looking for in the microcontroller? So essentially, if you talk about uh, a microcontroller, microcontroller in, uh, you know, uh, in a silo will not work. Right. It will essentially work with the components around it. Right. So generally, our chipset developer, right, uh, generally works on a board. They create uh, interfaces on the board, uh, which kind of you know works closely with the microcontroller. So in our case here, the illustration shows that there is a board, there is a power supply on the board, which is essentially giving you the power on the board, and then the components around it. And obviously this, uh, you know, yeah. So here, uh, along with this, it is important that uh, you know there is a matching documentation for the customer because that's kind of a reference design, uh, the references that he can uh, take up. Uh, obviously, a reference application so that he kind of takes our reference design, uh, you know, along with our board, and then you know kickstarts uh, his his development. And obviously, the the tools for development like compiler, debugger, and uh, you know, essentially in terms of logging and performance, this is mostly with respect to the system validation. When we kind of do the validation, it is important that we have the you know processes in place so that we are able to you know run our test cases. And we are able to really, you know, see uh, what is the performance of the chip, right? So that's where it is important to have those infrastructure in place, right? Uh, so let's move ahead. 
right so basically uh, from an aim of a solution provider uh, we essentially want to come up with a market requirement which is kind of closely done with the customer right initially during the uh, you know uh, the requirements uh, freeze and requirements discussion with the customer and then we finally it is important that you know we document them so that as a team we know what is that we are working towards right so then basically with this published documentation the requirements the design teams and everybody you know starts to come together to come up with an you know an integrated chip right which we also called as system on chip right and then finally as part of the value chain once the uh, the chip is developed we start to work over the other essential deliverables which are kind of tool chains the collaterals the ecosystems uh, the evaluation board and finally the software drivers which kind of kick starts the uh, the customer with our reference design with our chip right because the sooner the customer starts working over our design you know the better is the acceptance and uh, you know uh, proliferation of the of the chip there yeah let's go ahead right so in general to achieve uh, this uh, you know the chip design uh, the the new program initiatives that we kind of take up uh, you know this is how the process looks like right so the marketing team comes up with a final you know recommendation in terms of the requirements we do a concept that okay this is how the program will look like this is what the requirements would look like and then we go about defining complete definition which is kind of you know uh, defining it as per the requirements from the customer and then finally we start with planning and schedule in terms of what is the resources what is the cost and what are the complete uh, you know planning deliverables that uh, will make it happen to deliver and then it comes the execution stage right and once the during the execution stage you know once we have the so this is basically all the chip development which is happening before the silicon right so this is where the design is happening uh, the design checks are happening in the pre silicon where the silicon is still not there and once we have that in the place there is there is a post silicon scope which is essentially the chip the chip is in our lab now but we have to give it to the customer but we we play a gate there in terms of here the quality of the silicon so that's where the validation and the test areas come into picture and finally uh, you know we start to run over uh you know qualifications and production in terms of you know making it sure that we are able to deliver it to the customers with the right volumes and with the right quality right and obviously going into the volume manufacturing thereafter because we have the recipes now available uh, for volume production right so in terms of the checks uh you know right from the execution phase which is in pre silicon to the post silicon this is a kind of checks that you will see so basically you know as we talked about system of chip system on chip is an integration of lot of intellectual property like ips like flex scan like uarts like uh, you know other interfaces that are needed in the chip so these are called as intellectual properties or the ips right so as as we get these ip drops into the design uh, the ip verification which is a stand alone environment for the ip they will just validate the that ip as a whole works good right uh, you will have to take it into the socket integrate so that's where the ip verification and ip validation comes into picture and then the soc verification is essentially that you have now integrated the complete uh, the ips into the soc and we need to make sure that uh, the integration is happened good right so that's where the soc verification and the soc pre silicon comes into picture where we either do it by means of simulation we either make use of the you know pre silicon environments like zebu or the fpgas uh, so that you know the chip is still not on the silicon but we just you know burn the rtl use the rtl to do a validity over the rtl and ensure that there is spot checks done for the integration and finally the system on chip validation which is essentially done after the silicon right and these are this is the last line of defense because we are sitting in between the delivery of the customers uh, and uh, the the chip out uh, out of the fab uh, right so that's where it becomes really really very important that the system validation is done here right and finally on the manufacturing uh, domain um, you know volume manufacturing we need to make sure that there is a robust program uh, you know how we kind of validate and test in the volume uh, samples that is essentially in the ate the automotive test equipment stage so our scope mostly would be into the soc validation space here today uh, yeah uh, so we'll move ahead 
right so before we kind of look at uh, i think it is very important to you know because we are always kind of paranoid uh, when we are doing the system on chip validation right that you know what is the real impact if we escape a bug right and this is a you know an example you guys can uh, you know have offline have a look at it but it essentially talks about you know uh, the gm uh, General Motors, right? That they developed uh, an issue, and in fact, out of this, uh, you know, default issue of airbag uh, not getting deflated, right? Uh, during the during the crash, uh, they had to recall 4.3 million, uh, you know, cars back to their, uh, you know, uh, store, right? And that was really, really, uh, you know, uh, they really had to go back foot onto this and, uh, you know, fix this, right? So that is the kind of, you know. Uh, panic that will come into, you know, if essentially in the kind of areas where we are in the automotive uh, domain, which is, you know, kind of life uh, taking and life saving, right? So it is very, very important that uh, the chips that we deploy, uh, you know, are of good quality and we have done enough validation so that, uh, you know, there are no field issues there. Yeah, let's move ahead. So this is basically an illustration, you know, later we find the bugs, more is the, you know, impact. So basically if we, uh, during the design cycle, if we still find an issue in the pre-silicon phase where, you know, the samples are still not there, basically, you know, uh, the release, like the tape, uh, the tape release you see here, uh, whatever we find before the tape release, uh, basically the, sil the silicon release, then, uh, you know, we can still fix it in the RTL. But later, once it gets manufactured, then, you know, uh, this even becomes worst in terms of our cost and uh, the impact to the customers as well, right? And obviously, if we kind of find issues during the volume production, you know, everybody is, you know, full on. Everybody has, uh, you know, started deploying. So the cost of the issue really bites us back there. Yeah, let's move ahead. So with this context, right, it is important that, uh, you know, to look at what is we, if we miss, right? So we, we know we have missed our customer confidence. We have lost the market, uh, waste of effort. Obviously, we have done a lot of validation and testing, but still, you know, the bugs have escaped, right? And obviously, product recall and the payment of penalty. Yeah, let's move ahead. So basically, with this vision statement, the system validation team, you know, have to ensure that we are enabling highest quality silicon and we are delivering it to the customer in a shorter cycle time. Essentially, if you look at uh, the mobile phones and this, you know, the time the time to market is definitely getting reduced. So we are here defining uh, validation methodologies which are uh, scalable, which are, uh, you know, automated and uh, still deliver us high quality, right? That are the key things that we do out of the system validation space. Right. And uh, obviously out of this, uh, you know, there are no customer issues that we want to send it to the customer and uh, continuous improvement in terms of cycle time and quality year on year. These are the kind of metrics that we measure uh, as we move ahead. Right. So let's go ahead. Shubha. So uh, basically in terms of the silicon health checkup at the multiple stages, we already talked about uh, IP verification uh, is the basically where we are just talking that, you know, we are bringing in an IP, but the IP as a standalone is good. So there is uh, mostly this is getting checked in a standalone uh, environment. Soft verification, uh, you know, making it sure that the integration is happening properly. And SOC validation is the one which is basically looking at the system validation space, right? That the real scenarios uh, are really working, right? So for example, uh, if we are talking about an automotive chip, right? Uh, where we are talking about, uh, you know, braking, right? Then uh, the automotive braking, that uh, what are the interfaces? What are the logics that are involved uh, in the regenerative braking or the automotive braking? We need to make sure that those scenarios are really replicated in our lab and uh, we are able to secure the use cases that the, the chip will, will be used in, right? And finally, uh, you know, as part of the marketing team and uh, our, you know, 
the reference designs that uh, you know we showcased it to the customers that everything is working good and overall the chip has high capability right so that's th these are the things that uh, kind of happen and some of the times we have seen while enabling these applications itself you know it shows us some bugs uh, which uh, we later have to fix or uh, you know work upon yeah let's move ahead so typical validation flow right so that's where i think the key exciting part comes uh, you know because we start with uh, you know requirements in place so we have an input that what is the requirement what is this uh, how the silicon will should behave so there is an expectation with respect to with respect to requirement there is a reference manual which we give to the customer so which basically talks about uh, you know how the system will work uh, it talks about the how and the what part and we need to make sure this how and the what part uh, is uh, you know working as uh, desired and as we have published in the reference manual uh, obviously the use cases doc which is essentially talks about the different use cases that it can support and then electrical specs uh, in terms of the analog validation that uh, these are the electrical specs that the that the chip will be able to operate uh, how much power it will consume this has to be uh, you know in a ballpark number that we have committed to the customer so with these kind of inputs we start to create our validation plans right and obviously once we kind of start doing this uh, as part of the cycle we kind of get this reviewed as part of the all uh, the stakeholders uh, the system engineering teams uh, who has given us the requirements the design teams the applications teams so essentially making it sure that we are not missing out any any testing or a validation scenario right and then as part of this uh, you know uh, it is important that we start to create our content the validation content uh, which is essentially you know uh, either it could be kind of programming constraints or it could be kind of you know direct flows that we enable to uh, you know run the chip right finally once these patterns are devised uh, and created we execute those scenarios on the device under test and obviously uh, we would need compiler and the debuggers in terms of creating these test scripts uh, right and then uh, one of the key important thing that you will see here is that uh, along with the parallel development of plan and review we also develop our valid because we have to create our validation port which is uh, like a reference port uh, which we want to make sure that just when the silicon comes there is a validation board where we can put our silicon on and we in we you know we can enable all the interfaces around the system on chip so that we can create our system validation scenarios so this is another aspect that uh, you know the validation teams works on in creating the validation board and uh, just near the silicon this board is available and we start to create and dump our patterns onto this evaluation board to do the system validation and finally uh, you know we see failures so that's where you know our engineering team and us uh, we work very very closely a very deep dive uh, into the design issues and finally come up with uh, you know uh, obviously logging the defects uh, proposing the workarounds and then planning for a fix if we really need that right and one of the key things that you will see is that once our, you know after this whole humongous effort is done you know we 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 do a validation sign off which we call as validation complete and obviously this is the party time for the whole team so we believe in work hard and enjoy hard so uh, this is how the typical evv looks like uh, the so when we say mcu this is what we are creating as part of the design process and as part of the you know the validation board uh, this is how it looks like so for example we populate uh, the the files we populate the interfaces with respect to the flex scan the flex ray uh, there are any you know gpi functionalities on the mcu we make sure that we have connections in place on the board so that we can validate them and obviously the other interfaces for automation so sometimes you also use the fpgas here uh, to make sure that uh, we are able to do automation along with the MCU. So we'll talk about quickly touch upon that, uh, you know, in the next slides as well. But this is what the evolution port looks like. And, uh, you know, we do a code development along with our validation test case development. Yeah, let's move ahead. 
Right. So basically, uh, this is something that I brought it up here, considering that you guys know what we are talking about. But idea here is that as part of the system on chip development, as we are developing our test cases, you know, either we are working on risk processors, power PC processors, ARM processors, we need to make sure that our content is able to run over them. And that's where we are writing a code in a high level language, C, C++. Right. And that's where you will see a lot of focus on C, C++, Python now. Right, that uh, so we develop these test cases in this format, and a cross compiler helps us, uh, you know, uh, converting into the machine level language so that uh, these are actually run uh, on the platform, system on chip validation platform. Yeah, Shubham. So basically, along with this, we work closely work with the vendors in terms of you know these different compilers, tool chains. If we see any debugs, because most of the time we are working, uh, you know, on cutting edge uh, CPU cores as well. So uh, the core development is happening, and we work closely with the vendors. So it is kind of you know uh, the industrial breakthroughs that we are also making as part of the system on chip, uh, the technical breakthroughs that are happening in the uh, overall technical roadmap. Uh, that we are we are uh, working on. So debug tool chain is essentially uh, the tail to the tool chain that uh, helps us to load the code, debug the code, uh, and uh, essentially the the JTAG uh, interfaces that we kind of used to uh, and work. Okay. Yeah, let's move on. So I think again, uh, considering that you guys know what we are talking about, but we are talking about debuggers here. So basically debuggers are something but which is helping us root causing the failures, right? Able to download our code, quickly read write the SOC registers, uh, snoop the real time memory, right? And uh, obviously fastening the uh, software development process uh, in terms of, you know, uh, writing our high level C code or high level C, C++ code because, you know, we are not writing in machine language. So overall debuggers are helping us uh, do a source level debug uh, with respect to the cross compile language that we are using. Again, we are working very closely with the tool vendors, giving them the feedback because the similar path will be used by the customers as they develop uh, their applications over the system on chip. Yeah, let's move ahead. So in terms of the reference manual and the errata sheet, uh, you know, if you kind of pick up any of the NXP devices, or maybe any uh, system on chip for that matter, you will always get a reference manual, which is kind of a user guide. So our job is making sure that the contents of the reference manual are golden and whatever the customer is looking at, we also look at the same unbiased picture, right? So that's kind of a different because the verification teams before the silicon, you know, they at that time, the, the development is still happening on the on the manuals and the sheets, right? So they are more interested in bringing up the, the, the SOC environment, bringing of the chip right but we are essentially working in the system validation space we are making sure that you know what we have committed to the customer is delivered and finally eratas are the ones you know because as part of the time to market and uh, you know cost let's say even if we find some in-house issues it is important that we document them let the customer know that there are some issues and also provide some you know workarounds so we call them as eratas right and that's where it is also equally important that we deliver that to the customer. Right, uh, let's move ahead. Again, we talked about this, so there is a little bit animation. Shubham, if you can help. So basically, you know, we are writing our code uh, in a GUI based application. So here I think we are showing code warrior uh, kind of a suit uh, where we are writing our test case, loading it onto the dot. Uh, yeah, let's move ahead, right? So this code is now available and it kind of uh, through the JTAG, we, we load it onto the DUT. And then finally, when we are running, we are making use of a lot of tools, uh, you know, for monitoring in terms of whether the signal conditioning is good, the outputs are good. Uh, that's a typical silicon validation environment. But uh, again, having said that, the, the, the experience and the skill set is quite very versatile because you are using you know, uh, working on a software, you're working on a hardware, you're working on tools. I, you know, uh, it's heartening to say that, you know, the validation engineer has to be very, very smart engineer, 
right? That's where I urge you guys to get into this environment and uh, start dirting your hands, right? So it is very, very exciting to see stuff actually working, right? Which you will not see uh, as a whole in any other domain, let's say in the soft verification or the other domains. Yeah, let's move ahead. And this is basically, you know, we as we do as part of our continuous improvement. So if you kind of look at our reference designs, our validation reports initially, uh, as the complexity of the silicon increases, you know, this mesh of wires, right, was the initial designs that we used to do, where, you know, there were a lot, lot many interfaces and each and every wire has to be a point to point connection where we have to connect the wires. Now it is kind of a very, very ubiquitous kind of a arrangement where, you know, we have brought about FPGA, uh, you know, on the board, which helps us route uh, the uh, interfaces. Yeah, so this is how the uh, validation setup moves there and let's move ahead. Again, I will not touch deep here, but idea here is that as part of the overall uh, validation, we also make use of uh, RTOS, the real time operating systems to emulate the real time uh, traffics, the real time scenarios, right? So it becomes kind of complex, but then very, very exciting again, where we start to tie, uh, you know, the content uh, into the RTOS and start to run it, uh, you know, uh, basically, you know, uh, stressing the whole system on chip by running all of these IP tasks. You know, it could be FlexScan, it could be ENet, it could be you know the other interfaces that we are running together, and stressing the whole system on chip, uh, making it sure that uh, you know they are all running together when the complete uh, you know system chip uh, is being stressed. Um, so we call it as a Marvel tool here, and again a very very. Uh, intellectual property tool, uh, you know, kind of patents over it. OK. Uh, yeah, I think this is just a quick touch upon as part of the overall validation effort. It is important that we do a functional bug hunting. So when we say bug, bug hunting is that, you know, if we start working towards the silicon before uh, the silicon itself, we call it as a bug hunting initially because we want to make sure that we find the bug early. So here we make use of the emulation platforms, the FPGS, and then finally a bug hunting happens on the silicon validation, which is essentially the uh, you know the post silicon where we know what is what is happening, what are the kind of issues on the chip, and we 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 know what is the quality of the silicon. Right, and along with this, uh, the whole story is around the silicon debug. Right, so that's kind of very, very important in the overall validation space. Uh, that's where the maximum learning happens. That's where maximum patents, maximum you know papers happens in terms of how we go about uh, doing the silicon debug. Again, a very, very exciting area. Now let's move ahead. So uh, before we kind of look into this, right, it is important to you know, uh, kind of understand, uh, you know, the mindset uh, we go about the debug, right? So suppose you moved into a new house and got your washing machine kind of installed, right? And when you powered it up, but, uh, you know, it, did, it didn't start, which generally happens, right? So uh, what could be the potential reasons, right? So I'll pause here, uh, you know, just for a few seconds. You start think, thinking, you know, what are the th thoughts that are coming into your mind? OK, right. So I think uh, so basically see uh, if you have now uh, an issue, right? You start to break down the problems in terms of, you know, an approach that what could be the potential reasons uh, of the failures, right? So Shubham, if you kind of move ahead. Right, so basically your debug flow uh, generally talks about the possible reasons. Uh, first, uh, you know, there are se several different methodologies to actually do a kind of a fishbone uh, approach. Uh, you know, there are a lot many papers, a lot many different methodologies that we, but we are talking about very simplistic one where we are just putting up the assumptions and the, you know, the the, uh, the, the areas that they are, the issue could lie in, right? So for example, now, we say the test is failing, which is essentially the power on not, not happening on the washing machine. There could be a setup issue. For example, we plugged in the uh, the cord. The cord itself is not working. The the plug, the socket is not working, right? Uh, and there, there could be another setup issue there, right? 
then there is in fact a documentation issue because we were following a user guide that user guide was saying that oh follow this step but they essentially did not talk about two buttons that needs to be pressed so that came to be a documentation issue and then a silicon issue which is essentially a washing machine issue in itself that you know we started uh, the washing machine and then there was a power surge and uh, you know the silicon burnt whatever right so there could be a bug in in the washing machine itself which is a real issue right and timing issue is basically once we start the chip you know after some time uh, you know randomly the washing machine starts to fail so this could be a timing or a race kind of a condition that could be happening so again there are different theories uh, in each of these branches as we kind of go about uh, doing the debug important point here is that you know, as we to do the debug and the mindset that is needed is not only to find the bug but also to find the workaround right and that's where again uh, innovations are happening in that area because we are providing the customers that you know it's fine that there is a defect but there is no need to spin another silicon you can still use it uh, in the field or somebody finds an issue in the field you don't need to recall the vehicle back you know you can enable uh, you know them still in the field so that's where the errata is important and that's where the mindset is important for debug and getting an acceptable workaround yeah, let's move ahead. So debug challenges we've already talked about. Uh, you know, uh, we are talking about multiple theories, multiple variables, right? One of the important point in the system on chip is the complexity is increasing. You know, uh, there are not much monitors which are available. So as part of the whole system on chip development process, we come up and analyze what are the kind of debug things that, uh, you know, instrumentation that we can have on the chip. And we, we provide that requirement upfront uh, during the design phase. Right. Uh, yeah, let's move ahead. Uh, lab equipments again become very, very important because as part of the debugs, it is very important that you know we know uh, what is the signals, what are what are the you know conditioning on the circuits that are coming in, uh, you know. Uh, are happening. So oscilloscope uh, basically is the one which is helping us to extract the wave shape of an electrical signal, constantly varying signal voltages to measure them, and obviously signal triggering that we we used to do as part of the debug. For example, there is an issue. We want to you know do a, a trigger to the oscilloscope to measure something, right? So this is what where we use the oscilloscope. Power supplies again because if we kind of are supporting multiple power supplies on the board. Uh, you know, we need to make sure that we have tested them all. So that's where we use uh, the power supplies there. Uh, move ahead. Logic analyzer is essentially, you know, uh, where we could see that, OK, let's we are we are talking to an I2C memory or an I2C device and we get to see that there is a corruption which is happening. So in that case, we need to plug in the the logic analyzer to see what is really happening in the protocol right what is really happening in the uh, are there any rise fall time issues or there is any protocol failure that is coming in right so that's where the logic analyzer mostly the digital part of the debug uh, comes into picture right and then finally uh, in terms of the interfaces where we want to really do a waveform generation in terms of you know sine wave square wave uh, we should have a capability that we should be able to inject these waveforms and uh, do our debug and do our testing uh, depending upon the requirements. Right, so that is kind of an introduction of the equipments. And obviously uh, with the other equipments like test centers where uh, you know we want to generate traffic uh, on the Ethernet interface uh, on the uh, and we want to ensure that uh, there is enough uh, testing done with the different type of packets that are available uh, you know in the field so we kind of inject these kind of packets and make sure that this is happening good. the uh, the chip is able to sustain them and uh, you know support them okay all right yeah, and last but not the least is basically the temperature forcing equipment. So here I think it is important that you know there is a condition of the electrical spec that the chip is able to support uh, run it into the temperature domains, right? Uh, you know, for example, in the minus degrees to the plus degrees in terms of 120 degrees Celsius, right, and minus 45 or so. So then I think that's where we want to make sure that our car, uh, you know, where we have deployed a 
chip there in the car is able to sustain these environmental conditions, right? And that these are kind of reliability tests that we kind of do. To do this, it is important that we realize uh, these temperatures in the lab, and these are the equipments that are uh, being used. Again, a very exciting uh, field. Uh, to inject these when the system scenarios are running and uh, very you know different scenarios of timing issues that come into the picture when we are running this right so very deep rooted area here uh, let's move ahead and finally you know uh, because i was talking about what is really different when we do validation so i understand when i was part of few right i always used to get excited oh i want to do design i want to do you know the complete chip but uh, validation mindset is a very very different mindset right it is the way uh, i'm sure you know validation engineer knows more than the designers because they had to see the complete view they know what are the different components to connect and stitch together and how they will work right uh, you know another, another design engineer may be just looking at a very small component but you guys will have to really think from a system validation a 360 degree kind of a view uh, which is not uh, there in everybody right obviously uh, most learning comes with when you fail so feel excited if something doesn't work that's the kind of a validation mindset we encourage in our lab that you know if something fails we really become happy initially that yes we have found something there is an opportunity for us to learn uh, look for previous issues that's that's where you know the art of ai is coming into picture where we are creating uh, the libraries we are creating the reference patterns which we can uh, make use of right so again a very strong area of ai uh, which is coming into this area uh, you know uh, for validation space uh, random observations are one where we kind of you know see timing issues so sometimes as the engineer the, the perseverance is missing but that's where the real issues are lying right so that's where you know the perseverance is really needed in a validation engineer obviously care for customers because you will have to really look at with the same eye as the customer and the same pain so if something is not working or you are not able to bring up your interface, the same pain will be experienced by the customers. So that's where you want to you know, have the same kind of opinion. And uh, uh, test case coding. So when executing, it will fail. Uh, how will I debug? Because when we are writing that mindset of writing the code, but also about how we will debug, right, is important. So most of the time, the designers and the you know people are writing the code, but they are not thinking how they will debug. So that's where it makes us different uh, in terms of our validation mindset, right? Um, right, and obviously teach, share to learn. That's kind of very important, and that is for everybody here. So that was kind of something uh, we kind of touched upon from the system on chip validation space. Uh, we had done it to the abstract level here considering that we had short time, but uh, you know, anytime we can go deeper once it is needed. Yeah, thank you. So maybe the next team, yeah. Okay. Yes, hello, hello everyone. Can you hear me? Can you please someone confirm if I'm audible or not? Yes, you are audible. Okay, so I'll start. My name is Rishi and I joined NXP this year as a firmware validation engineer. So mostly working on a sub team, which is extended validation. So today Shubham and I will be sharing with you some insights into the HSC validation processes. Moving on, next please, please. Yeah, so we'll delve into what is HSC basically. The, the scope of validation, the intro infrastructure validation we use. Also, I'll be talking about the, the compute farm and the automation processes. Uh, and lastly, the reports generation and bug tracking. So what is HSC? HSC, that is hardware security engine, is a specialized hardware component, or you can say a security subsystem, uh, which is basically a system with its own dedicated coprocessors and uh, secure RAM and storage, as you can see, inside a general system, which aims at running relevant security uh, functions for applications. It is designed to enhance the security of a system by offloading and accelerating the cryptographic operations such as encryption, decryption, hashing, and key management. This hardware-based acceleration improves the efficiency and speed of cryptographic processes. Com uh, it will improve the speed of cryptographic processes compared to software-based implementations. 
so that is why we use the hardware, hardware based acceleration it is also integrated into the microcontroller and provides a dedicated and efficient solution for these tasks Uh, also, the HSC includes its own TRNG, which is random number generator. HSC has its own uh, uh, random number generator, which is essential for cryptographic pro protocols that require uh, unpredictable and secure random values. So HSC also has its own secure, uh, as I said, secure data, secure RAM, and gates to keep exclusive access to its certain services so that host can only communicate it through a uh, electronic mailboxing, which is uh, through MU channels. So out from outside, no one can access the HSE systems. These hardware engines need to be secured. OK, so the design is more of a firmware than hardware because, you know, specifications keep changing. So it will be very difficult and very expensive to, you know, keep on making new silicons for every change. So that is why it is more of a firmware so that we can update it through, you know, over the year. Also, to ensure the integrity of the system, HSC is also involved in secure boot processes, or you can say firmware updates, ensuring that only authenticated and authorized firmware is used, so no one can hack it in the system. Uh, next, next page, please. Yes, firmware validation. So the reason we need validation process is to test the validation development that keep and keep it in check with the requirement specifications that we have from the customers. OK, uh, these requirement specifications can also be defined by an XP standard or most most probably from customs. So very, uh, I think one more thing I have to tell you is verification and validation. So these two are different. I'll explain. Verification is about confirming that the product is being built correctly, while validation is about confirming that the right product is being built. You can uh, keep it into consideration the customer needs. So we'll, we will be talking about validation in this slide. Both of these processes are crucial in ensuring the quality and reliability of a product or system. So I think we can categorize the testing process into three unit testing, qualification testing, and system testing. So I think starting with unit testing, think of it as testing as a building block, like a function or a module. OK, so I think this is done by developers. So developers conduct these tests during or, during or after coding. Uh, catching issues early is, I think, most important because you, you you will build a base. You will build a stronger base if you do the unit testing while you are coding or while you are developing. So I think uh, it also promotes code maintainability. Identifying problems in the early stage of development helps us create strong foundation. Okay, so talking about qualification testing, that is that is uh, our, what our team does. So it ensures compliance with specific standards or regulations. During this phase, we perform a comprehensive test. Like we will take into consider the positive scenarios, the negative scenarios, and the boundary conditions. Uh, we will take into condition these all standards. And next is system testing. Yes. So this is where we evaluate our entire integrated system behaves. We have tested individual units in qualification testing. We have tested individual functions in unit testing. So in system testing, we'll, uh, we'll test the whole system, the whole HSC together as a, as a whole. It will cover all the functional aspects, non-functional aspects like performance and security. It's the last line of defense, I can say, before a software heads on to the real world. I think concluding these three, I'll say unit test checks the uh, integrity details, qualification ensures we are compliant to all the standards, and system testing evaluates the system as a whole. Uh, and other thing is we can Categorize also into three types of method like black box, white box, and gray box. So I can say in black box, it is a method of software testing in which the tester, like the validation team, is not concerned with the internal knowledge, or or they will not know the internal functionality. They will not they will not have access to the internal code which is written by the developers. It rather focuses on validation based on the requirement specification or from the upper upper point of view, like from the customer's point of view. In white box, we have all the access. We can also use in some cases like if if a customer reports bug, we can we can delve into you know the uh, source code. Like uh, also, the gray, gray box is in is in the middle of these both methods. Like we'll have limited information about the internal functionality of the system. Next slide, please. Yes, product road development. I think uh, this roadmap. Uh, let me decrease. Like in product development uh, phase, our aim is to plan well and have clear vision 
from the starting only like from the idea to reality we have to have a clear vision see the product roadmap and development life cycle are these two guiding frameworks for this we can use we can use this okay as a company i think especially that is a publicly traded company your main objective will always be to get the product right and hand into the market as fast as you can and you can take into consideration the amount of dollars you are spending so i think these points will uh, help in understanding uh, that these three points will be checked like the second point we have written is shift left focus so what we have done is we'll be moving on to pre silicon validation so that we don't have to you know see what happens is if you test if you test after the silicon has been uh, developed it will take a lot of time again to develop the silicons with fix and also a lot of money so what we do is we shift left in the roadmap or you can see the life cycle we'll shift left that means we'll basically move the testing quality and performance evaluation early in the dev process that is even before the silicon is uh, in the tape out process so we are in uh, we are using vdk tool which is from synopsis for pre silicon validation okay as a company oh okay uh, also uh, to ensure that we are on time we what we do is we develop test cases uh, while that uh, while that while the development is in process so they go they both go parallel and also there is one other thing which i think will is not you know is not particularly dependent on the road map but we also take in mind the extended validation which is basically a full stack cases for example it basically is a application uh, will, will which will work like the, like the customer wants the hsc to use also as a company we adhere to rigorous qualification standards like iso 26262 and iso 21434 also there are two types of tests like first testing and penetration testing which are essential strategies in ensuring software security first testing focuses on input validation or using we use automated tools to identify unexpected behaviors like what could happen if this happens or like we can you know uh, make different test cases for that and on the other hand penetration testing simulates cyber attacks to evaluate over overall security pinpointing potential exploits uh, moving on to the next slide. Yes, yes. So that this is the infrastructure we use in a validation process, like hardware setups. We have evaluation boards, which I think Shubham will explain in the coming slides. We have JDEG interface, which will be used in debugging. For example, we can use real time. We can with the, with the help of JDEG interface, we can use real time or uh, debugging. Uh, we can see in the real time what are what is happening in the registers or in the memories. We can just check all of these. Also, we have remote pieces in a compute farm, which you'll see in the coming slides. So basically, these remote PCs, uh, all of them can use parallelly, and uh, even the customers can use if a major bug happens or something. So these these are the software setups like Jira, which is basically a versatile project management tool, streamlines tasks, tracks issues, keep teams in sync, which is more important if you have a big team. Git, as you all know, is the backbone of version control, which empowers collaboration, IDs. We use it's it's like a it's, it's like a playground. We can use everything. We can develop here. We can debug here. Everything else. Trace thirty two is that uh, is an application where we debug. It uses JDAG interface. And Jenkins is an automation tool, which you know orchestrates continuous integration. Like the wheel, it will check out. Uh, uh, it it is it basically is an automation framework, which will you know which we don't have to. Uh, keep our hands on it will do automatically the processes okay thank you and i think i'll move i'll hand over to shubham so hello Hello everyone, I hope I am audible. So this is the evaluation board that we use in the NXP to validate the silicons. So as you can see that uh, silicon connect needs an evaluation board and these are some of the parts of the evaluation board. The first one is the 12 watt input that is used to power the evaluation board. Second one is the UART port that is used to serially connect with the board. Next is the jumper for motherboard. This act as a fuse to connect the motherboard to the silicon. 
Next is the on off switch that is used to switch on or off the board. Next is the SD card slot. Here we can use uh, this slot to ins uh, add e extra memory to the evaluation board through in by inserting the SD card. Next is the QSPI flash. As you can see that this is integrated in the evaluation board and is used as the internal memory. Next is the power switch, which is used to hard reset the silicon. So silicon, this is MCU microcontroller unit. So we insert the silicon in the evaluation board in this uh, port MCU. Next, next are the SGMI, SMA and RGMI ports, which are used to connect the board with the different connectors to communicate with the silicon. Next is the Arcon. These are the switches through which we can change the configuration of the boards. Next is the JTAG. We use JTAG to connect the evaluation board, the silicon uh, through the uh, JTAG connector to the PC so that we can validate the silicon. So going on, as, as you can see, this is the compute farm that we have at our, our NXP sites. This has many computer remote PCs connected to the uh, internet of the NXP, which are securely logged in by only the employees of the NXP. So these remote PCs have connected evaluation boards with them and helps us in validating uh, in many ways. These are some of the benefits. Uh, remote access. We can access these uh, PCs and uh, the evaluation boards remotely through anywhere of the uh, through uh, the internet uh, from any corner of the world at any time. We can also access any board parallelly using these remote PCs. Also, there is automation in the Jen through Jenkins, which helps us to automate the test cases, which helps us to increase the efficiency of our team. So next is the automation task and sequences. So how the automation takes place in Jenkins. So first of all, uh, what Jenkins does is check out the Git repo for the uh, fresh commits and the latest information that is present. Then it start building the application and then it runs these test suits on the silicon board. After running, uh, the remote PC stores these test results and send them uh, to the uh, required uh, validation team through email and messages. So as you can see, these are some test artifacts, the test report, code coverage and traceability. So test report contains the test suits which we need to test on the silicon. Some of them are automated and some of them are manual. So as you can see, these are the status that it is pass or fail. Next is the code coverage. In the code coverage, we check whether the test cases we, uh, we are running on the silicon covers all the functions that are written by the development team. So next is the traceability. Traceability checks whether the features that the customer has asked us to develop have been implemented or not. The next slide is firmware bug reporting and debugging. So as you can see that this is a pie chart that number of bugs we have reported and that and the priorities that these are the major bug, minor bugs or the moderate bugs. So next is the how these all happens. So first of all, we get the specification of the silicon that is being developed. Then the validation team develop the test cases and the scripts that we require for running these test cases using the JTAG. Then these some of the test cases are automated uh, using the Jenkins, which are running in our uh, compute farm. And next, there are some manual test cases that need human intervention that we run in parallel. And then at last, we review all the test results and debug the failures. Then after we get the errors, we log the test results and on the successful com uh, com completion of the feature and artifacts, we publish the quality report. So the summary is that HSC firmware validation goes step by step. So HSC is the secured hardware engine, crypto decryption, encryption, accelerator. Uh, also, we need to check that it is bug free so that it can be used by the customer and there is no error. 
So next is the validation infrastructure that is hardware setup, automation tools and software IDs that we use. Automation nightly the, that is used to automate the results and the test cases so that we need less human intervention and increases the efficiency. Next is the report and quality that all the specifications must be beat 100% and the quality of firmware is the best that we can provide to our customer with the negative, positive and all the extended validation test cases. So thank you.